Hi guys, welcome to the technical video from default.co.uk. Uh, my name is Rich, and this is another impromptu video. Today we're going to be discussing VTY, um, access of, of VTY ports, um, timeouts on VTY ports, how to set passwords, uh, and what to look what to look for, um, how to secure them, but still to allow access to uh, everybody else. Maybe. Uh, we'll go into a little bit about how we can deny everybody else access but permit you access. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? So let's um, let's have a look at this then. So I guess I've got two routers here, R1 and R2. I'm going to configure them very basically. Uh, R1's going to have a network interface of 10.1.12.1 and R2's going to have 10.1.12.2. Um, so we'll just put those on there, I guess. We can just, uh, so not to remind ourselves. So that's going to be 10.1.12.1 and this guy over here is going to be 10.1.12.2. And we're going to connect those together um, across this across this network here, and uh, we're going to tell net from R1 to R, sorry R2 to R1 just to prove out a lot of the uh, things that we're going to cover. You can see uh, these are basically starting from scratch. We've got no configuration on these uh, guys whatsoever. Um, so we're going to hopefully get this to work without too much fuss. Let's see where we are. Okay, so uh, this is going to be R2. Let's give it a host name, and then let's go into the uh, Ethernet port, we'll give it an IP address, 10.1.12.2, we said it was going to be, just give it a 24-bit mask there, and again on this one we've got hostname R1, same thing, interface, fast Ethernet 00, IP address 10.1.12.1, let's do a no shot on those, whoops, no shot, no shot. Let's just wait those to come up. And let's just do a ping. So this is a great command, do. Don't forget that one. You don't have to come out of configuration mode anymore. You can run uh, do. Let's ping router 1. And that's that's great. That's come up now. So let's um, let's just see what we're talking about here. So let's telnet. Um, talent. That's never going to work. Telnet to 10.1.12.1. So that's the IP address of R1, right? So it says password required but non-set. So what's it all about there, right? So over on here on R1, we have, if I just do a show line, you see we've got 98, 99, 100, 101, 102. And these are designated as VTY ports. So they're virtual teletype ports. That's what VTY stands for, virtual teletype. So back in the day when you had those green screens and you know, they're all connected to uh, serial cables back to some sort of mainframe, those were called teletype machines. And um, and now we're on the LAN, we're on the network, these are virtual teletypes. So VTY is virtual teletype. And we've got five, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102. There are five predefined, default, out-of-the-box VTYs for you to use. Uh, so we just tried to telnet to one of those. When we telnet here and we got password required but non-set, we were actually trying to get into this one here on 98. Okay, see the uses? One. Yeah? So if we were telneted in and we telneted in again, we'd get the next one along. 99. And if we were telneted to that one, we're telneted to a uh, third time, we'd get 100. So that'd be three, like, con this is concurrent, concurrent VTY because they're sessions. Obviously, if, if we telneted on and then came out and then telneted back on again, we'd still get re be reissued with 98. But anyway, so let's, let's get telneted on for the first time. So password required but non-set. This is a VTY password, right? So on R1, you go into line VTY and we're going to configure VTY port 0. If you want to do a range, you can do line VTY 0 and then the next, the, the, the next port that you want to do in the range. So if we're going to do configure all of these VTY ports from 98 to 102, Remember, that's five VTY ports starting at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four is five. Okay? So line VTY zero to four. We'll give it a password. We'll give it Cisco. And uh, then we'll use the login keyword, which means that you have to, uh, have to log in. And here's the password that you need to use. So back on R2 now, if we tell net to, uh, to R1, now we get a user authentication verification request. So we set the password as Cisco. So let's type that in. And now we're on there. And actually, we can just prove that we're on there. Let's do a show users. And you see we get the 98 VTY0 there, 98 VTY0, idle, that's us. And uh, actually we're not getting the prompt back because of another great feature of uh, Cisco IOS out of the box. It's trying to do a domain lookup, it's trying to do a DNS lookup on this. Even though I've configured no DNS information, it's got no name servers, it knows nothing. It's trying to do a lookup on this, on this IP address here. That's why it took all that time. Yeah, let's just do it again just to prove that out for you. Yeah, you see it's not, it's not returning me the prompt. 
because it's doing this domain lookup. So let's disable that domain lookup. This happens an awful lot, you know. There's, there's an awful lot of times that you'll be doing something on the route and you think, wow, this is taking forever. What the heck is it doing? And it's doing this DNS lookup. So we do don't, no IP domain lookup here. It's global configuration mode command, no IP domain lookup. And now the next time we do this show users, watch straight the prompt straight away. Bang. Yeah? It's not doing the domain lookup now anymore on that IP address. So that's a nice little, nice little um, bit of information there, I guess, if you don't already know it. Right, so now the default default uh, timeout for, a, for a, a VTY session is 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay? And that's an idle timeout. It's not an absolute timeout. So if I'm, if I'm forever doing new things, yeah, then that's great. The idle timeout will never change. So when I do a show users, you see the idle, see the idle period there? Zero, 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 zero. That's because I'm I'm on VTY zero. I'm I'm telling it onto line ninety-eight, VTY port zero. Yeah, and so every time I do a show users, I'm I've you know I'm I'm doing a command already. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna have a timeout, right? So this is the idle timeout. If I did nothing, um, for a long time, the idle timeout would go up. And like I say, the default is ten minutes. So uh, tell you what, let's just see that in action. I'm gonna do a Control Shift Six, X. Now go back onto R2, yeah, back onto R2. Let's telnet onto R1 again, Cisco. So now I've already got the existing session on, on line 98, yeah. I've left that one running in the background. That one's already still going. And now I've telneted in again. So what should we see this time? You get it? You got it right? Line 98. VTY port 1 should be what I see this time and we're interested in this idle timeout so because I've left our, um, the first telnet session hanging in there this idle timeout should be incrementing now alright so let's have a look at that yeah so as we predicted line 99 is the one I've just telneted in on and the existing one that I left running on line 98 that's um, see that idle period there 41 seconds yeah so I'm I'm on I'm on 99. That's what the star means, and um, my idle period is zero because every time I'm doing show users, I'm resetting that idle timeout. But the other telnet one, it's incrementing. See, it's one minute and three now. Now the default idle timeout is 10 minutes, um, and we can change that. We can change that absolutely. So let's go into um, into R1. Remember, this is a VTY command, so we're going to go line VTY zero and then to four. That's the default. And we're going to set um, an idle timeout period of, um, what should we do? Let's do five minutes. All right. So this is the exec timeout. Yeah. It's not called the uh, idle timeout. It's exec timeout. Let's do a question mark there. So you see we've got timeout in minutes. So we want to set it to five minutes. And then you can set it in seconds as well. So we just want exactly five minutes. So now the exec timeout is five minutes. Let's hop over here. Now if I just do a show monitor, we'll be at seat. Sorry. Um, Show, ah, no, it's show terminal. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Just thinking out loud there. So if I just do a show terminal there, you see I've got the idle timeout now of five minutes. See that? Yeah. So let's just do a show users now. And let's see where we are. So two minutes, 14. Maybe we should have set this a little bit lower. Let's do a, an idle timeout of three, of three minutes. Three minutes. Now let's see, uh, let's see here. So two minutes, 24. Let's just leave this for a second, a little while and come back. So we're at 2.57, 3 minutes, 3 minutes 1, 3 minutes 3, you see this? So we've shot through the idle timeout now, and it's not, it's not terminated that session. And the reason for that is, that's an existing session, yeah? So the way this works, we set, we set the exec timeout to be, five, to be 3 minutes now, um, looking at the existing session there into VTY port 1, we're already at 3 minutes 24, and it's not timed it out. And the reason for that is because it was an existing session, it inherited the um, the timeout value for that session. So as far as VTY0 is concerned, its idle timeout is uh, is 10 minutes, and it will disappear after 10 minutes. Okay, so that's that's great. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. We've got no, no VTY sessions going on right now. So let's say um, we really wanted um, uh, the sessions to absolutely time out. So it was nothing to do with whether someone was typing something in or not. Nothing to do with whether it was it was an idle timeout. So like um, you, you would type you would type a command and then wait five minutes and then type another command and then wait five minutes. We actually wanted uh, users to be given a specific amount of time to do their work in and no more. 
Okay, and let's cho let's choose let's choose one minute for that. So we can we can do this with the absolute timeout. So the idle timeout was exec timeout, and um, uh, and, uh, <laughs> confusingly, the absolute timeout is called absolute timeout. So absolute timeout. And again, uh, this is in minutes. So we're going to set it to be one minute. There's no seconds value there. Notice on the end. So I'm going to tell net from R2 to R1, and uh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to watch me uh, my session uh, uh, disappear. So let's log in with with, with this. So we'll do uh, show users again. Let's just watch this. So my idle. Notice my idle is zero 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 zero. And we set the idle timeout to be no more than three minutes. But we know we've got an absolute timeout of um, of one minute. So let's just have a look at this. At this, we can see the idle timeout is there, set at three minutes, and we can see the session timeout is set at one minute. All right, all right. So we're going to watch this now. Um, now notice my idle timeout is is still still zero. Yeah, but in a minute I should have been binned out. So it's going to go soon, and um, there we go. All right, so after a minute, I've been kicked out, which is uh, which is which is great, I guess. But um, you know, it's one of those things that if you trust your people to be using your router, then um, then you don't really need an absolute timeout, I guess. Um, I can't I can't think many places I've actually used an absolute timeout before, so uh, it's personal preference.